chapter 38. And Shephatiah the son of Matan, and Galileah the son of Paskir, and Eucal the son of Yalamiah, and Paskir the son of Malchiah, heard the words that Yeremiah spoke unto all the people, saying, Thus saith the Lord, He that remaineth in this city shall die by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence. But he that goeth forth to the Chaldeans shall live, and his life shall be unto him for a prey, and he shall live. Thus saith the Lord, This city shall surely be given into the hand of the army of the king of Babylon, and he shall take it. Then the princes said unto the king, Let this man, we pray you, be put to death. For as much as he weakeneth the hands of the men of war that remain in this city, and the hands of the people, in speaking such words unto them, for this man seeketh not the welfare of this people, but the hurt. Then Zedekiah the king said, Behold, he is in your hand, for the king is not he that can do anything against you. Then took they Jeremiah and cast him into the pit of Malchiah, the king's son, that was in the court of the guard. And they let down Jeremiah with cords, and in the pit there was no water, but mire, and Jeremiah sank in the mire. Now when Abedmelech the Ethiopian, an officer who was in the king's house, heard that they had put Jeremiah in the pit, the king then sitting in the gate of Benjamin, Abedmelech went forth out of the king's house and spoke to the king, saying, my lord, the king, these men have done evil in all that they have done to Jeremiah the prophet, whom they have cast into the pit, and he is like to die in the place where he is because of the famine, for there is no bread in the city. Then the king commanded Abedmelech the Ethiopian, saying, Take from here thirty men with you, and take up Jeremiah the prophet out of the pit before he die. So Abedmelech took the men with him, and went into the house of the king under the treasury, and took their worn clouts and worn rags, and let them down by cords into the pit to Yeremiah. And Abedmelech the Ethiopian said unto Yeremiah, Put now these worn clouts and rags under your armholes, under the cords, and Yeremiah did so. So they drew up Yeremiah with the cords, and took him up out of the pit, and Yeremiah remained in the court of the garden. Now, then Zedekiah the king sent and took Jeremiah the prophet unto him into the third entry that was in the house of the Lord. And the king said unto Jeremiah, I will ask you a thing, hide nothing from me. Then Jeremiah said unto Zedekiah, If I declare it unto you, wilt you not surely put me to death? And if I give you counsel, will you not hearken unto me? So Zedekiah the king swore secretly unto Jeremiah, saying, As the Lord lives, that made us this soul, I will not put you to death, neither will I give you into the hand of these men that seek your life. Then said Jeremiah unto Zedekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of hosts, the God of Israel, If you will go forth unto the king of Babylon's princes, then your soul shall live, and this city shall not be burned with fire, and you shall live you and your house. But if you will not go forth to the king of Babylon's princes, then shall this city be given into the hand of the Chaldeans, and they shall burn it with fire, and you shall not escape out of their hand. And Zedekiah the king said unto Jeremiah, I am afraid of the Jews that are fallen away to the Chaldeans, lest they deliver me into their hand, and they mock me. But Jeremiah said, They shall not deliver you. Hearken, I beg you to the voice of the Lord in that which I speak unto you, so it shall be well with you, and you shall live. But if you refuse to go forth, this is the word that the Lord has shown me. Behold, all the women that are left in the king of Judah's house shall be brought forth to the king of Babylon's princes. Those women shall say, Your familiar friends have set you on and have prevailed over you, your feet are sunk in the mire, and they are turned away back. And they shall bring out all your wives and your children to the Chaldeans, and you shall not escape out of their hand, but shalt be taken by the hand of the king of Babylon, and you shall cause this city to be burned with fire. Then said Zedekiah unto Jeremiah, Let no man know of these words, and you shall not die. But if the princes hear that I have talked with you, 
and they come unto you, and say unto you, Declare unto us now what you have said unto the king, Hide it not from us, and we will not put you to death. Also what the king said unto you. Then you shall say unto them, I presented my supplication before the king, that he would not cause me to return to Yonathan's house to die there. Then came all the princes unto Yeremiah and asked him, and he told them according to all these words that the king had commanded. So they left off speaking with him, for the matter was not reported. So Yeremiah abode in the court of the guard until the day that Jerusalem was taken. And it came to pass, when Jerusalem was taken, all right, we're going to stop there. We're going to go back up to verse 1. Yesterday, we was talking about this period when Zedekiah had taken over. He was taking over the reign. The king of Babylon, see, had made him king. And this was, he was the one now that it was taking over the taxing of the people because that's what was going on. They was taxing the people and the... Yoconia had done been carried off into Babylon. They have sent to Jeremiah to see what was going on, see if the word of the Lord had came to him now. And Jeremiah had said, yes, it, it's came. And he told them what was going to happen. Don't, don't think you've pulled off anything good sending for the king of Egypt this land, from the land of enclosures to come up and help you because the Chaldeans are going to come back and burn this place with fire. And this here is, is really what made them mad, and the captains or the, the princes weren't happy. So the first chance that they got, they, they seized Jeremiah. We'll find the captain of the ward or the, the officiators at that time got a hold of Jeremiah, and they threw him into the prison house. Then Zedekiah sent and fetched Jeremiah up out of the prison house. And once again, Jeremiah told them, he was telling them, look, you're just going to be delivered into the king of Babylon's hand. Go out and give up. And there was plenty of witnesses there. He had sent, he had done sent Baruch, and Baruch had prophesied all these things earlier unto them. But the king had took Jeremiah out and put him in, out and made him into the court of the guard now and he had given Jeremiah uh, bread until the place would be seized until they would carry Je uh, and what this we're down now to just a few days before the Babylonians are actually going to come in into the gate and take over the city we're going to pick it up in verse 1 and Shephatiah the son of Matan, and Gedaliah, the son of Paskir, the, and Yehuchel, the son of Shalemiah, and Paskur, the son of Malkiah, heard this, the words that Jeremos, Jeremiah spoke unto all the people, saying. So now, once again, we have these witnesses now. There, everyone's around. These are going to be the princes, the, the rulers, and the sons of the king here, and it's Shephatiah. Shephatiah means my God is judge. He's the son of Matan, or the one it comes from, a gift, and Matan, we remember, Matan, Matan is very similar to Natan, which is Nathan. We would say Nathan. This, it's very similar to that, and that meaning to give. This being the gift. And Gedaliah, Gedaliah is my God is great. He's the son of Pascur, or comes from this one who was set free. Or actually this set free in the sense of being torn away and separated. And Yehukul, we remember Yehukul just from yesterday, even though it says Jukul. It's still the same individual because he is the son of Shalemiah. Jakukul means God is able. God is able to do things. God is able to work. See, God is able to set things up. God is able to raise up. God is able to throw down. God is able to separate. See, God is able. He's the son of Malachi. 
Malachia means my God's king. And these words were heard and spoke to the people. These ones were there. They heard the words that was spoke to. Thus saith the Lord, he that remains in this city shall die by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence. But he that goeth forth to the Chaldeans shall live, and his life shall be unto him for a prey, and he shall live. So Yeremia has took advantage of all the people getting around, and he's, he's went out to speak to them there, probably where the princes could get to him in the house of the Lord. And he has said that this place is given to the sword. The Lord has spoken, and he has, says everything that remains in this city shall die by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence. And this is the law, this word that will go forth and destroy even idolatry. By the famine, those that starve, those that are starving, and that's what was going on then. See, there was no bread left in the city, we're going to find out. All the rations were gone. They were down to nothing. And by the pestilence, and the pestilence is simply the word going forth and causing the, tr the judgment even from the word of God. Three, thus saith the Lord, this city shall surely be given into the hand of the army of the king of Babylon, and he shall take it. Thus said the Lord, this city shall surely be given into the hand of the army. And that's what it was that's what was going on, because they would not hearken to God. They would not hearken to the word of the Lord. Four, and God was trying to make this clear through this work. He had done sent Jehoiakim to Babylon and over into confusion. That which God established. And he was trying to make a point. God was trying to speak as loud as he could. For the princes said unto the king, Let this man, we pray you, be put to death. For as much as he weakeneth the hands of the men of war that remain in this city, and the hands of all the people in speaking such words unto them. For this man seeks not the welfare of this people, but the hurt. So all the princes, all the king's sons, and all the mighty ones and rulers were telling the king, let's kill this man, let's put him to death, for he's, he's getting everybody to rebel. He's, he's causing this weakness. Everybody thinks we're going to be conquered. Well, the, they was come down to the moment, seeing everything that Jeremiah had told them, everything this one God had appointed to tell them, to warn them, to blow the horn so that they could hear and turn from their wickedness and their evil ways, had come to pass when it was coming to pass and they was and it was down to the last few minutes, they were still wanting to try to kill the prophet for warning them that this is what's going to happen. Five. Then Zedekiah the king said, Behold, he is in your hand, for the king is not he that can do anything against you. So the king just tells him, Here, you do with him whatever you want, because it's not given to the king to hurt anybody. Six. Then took they Yeremiah and cast him into the pit of Malchiah, the king's son, that was in the court of the guard, and they let down Yeremiah the with cords, and in the pit there was no water but mire, and yet Armeus sank in the mire. So they took Jeremiah, they took Yeremia, and cast him now down into a pit, down into this old well that they'd done dipped all the water out of. See, there wasn't nothing left in the well but mud. And they and he dropped him down in there, and this was the pit of Malachi, and Malachi means my God's king. My God's king, and he's the son of the king. See, he is the son of Zedekiah. He is the son. He is that which come from justice of God. He's the king's son. And I know the King James Version here says he's the son of Hamalach. And, and Hamalach simply means the king. So they drop him down in there, and his feet, now his feet sink down in the mud. And all the while, Jeremiah's hanging down in there. There's no bread left. And there's no water. He's starving to death, dying of thirst. Seven. Now, when Abedinlech, 
the Ethiopian, an officer who was in the king's house, heard that they had put Yeremia in the pit, the king then sitting in the gate of Benjamin. So the king was sitting in the gate of Benjamin, and Benjamin being this son of my right, this, the work of my hands, God says, Zedekia, the justice of God, sitting there in the gate of Benjamin. He heard, because why, a bed Malek, a bed servant, see, the servant of Malek, this, the king, servant of king, that's what a bed Malek means. He's the Ethiopian, or this one of the sons of Cush. He's an officer or an officiator of the king. He does the business, business of the king. He's the king's servant. He comes and tells the king. Eight. Abed-Melech went forth out of the king's house and spoke to the king, saying, So Abed-Melech has come out of the king's house, and he is, because he's one of his servants, the servant of the king, see, Abed-Melech, he come out of the king's house, and he spoke to the king, saying, in the gate of Benjamin, nine, My lord the king, these men have done evil in all that they have done to Jeremiah, the prophet, whom they cast into the pit, and he is like to die in that place where he is because of the famine, for there is no more bread in the city. So now abed has told the king there's no more bread in the city. And Jeremiah is probably going to die. They've thrown him down into the pit. And he's probably going to die, starve to death down there. Ten. Then the king commanded abed the Ethiopian, saying, Take from here thirty men with you, and take up Yeremia the prophet out of the pit before he dies. So the king finally commands his servant, the one, the son of Cush, the the those of darkness, saying, "Take from here the thirty men, thirty being that dedicated when the law is complete, with you. Take up Yeremia the prophet out of the pit." So. When the, the law was complete, when the transgressors have reached their full, see, then Jeremiah would be lifted up out of the pit. So abed took the men with him and went into the house of the king under the treasury and took there worn clouts and worn rags and let them down by cords into the pit to Jeremiah. So abed the servant of the king, took the men with him, these 30 men, those that was dedicated, the king had given him to do this job, and went to the treasury. Now we're going to go to the treasury of the king, and we're going to see in there, also in there some worn clothing and some old rags. And they, and they took them down by cords into the pit to Jeremiah. So they tied them all together and made them a rope and lowered it down in there to him. 12, and abed the Ethiopian, said unto Yeremia, Put these, put now these worn clouts and rags under your armholes, under the cords, and Yeremia did so. So abed the Ethiopian, told Jeremiah to put these old worn rags, old worn clothing, and these pieces of rope they had tied together, put them under his arms, under his armholes, this would be your armpits. Under the, and they and Jeremiah did so. Thirteen. So they drew up Yeremia with the cords and took him up out of the pit, and Jeremia remained in the court of the guard. So now they've got Jeremiah, and they finally pulled him up out of the pit with these old worn-out rags and old clothing and whatever they could find to drag him up out of there with. Jeremiah, this one whom God has appointed. They finally got him up out of the pit. 14. Then Zedekiah the king sent and took Yeremia the prophet unto him into the third entry that was in the house of the Lord. And the king said unto Yeremia, I will ask you a thing. Hide nothing from me. So now Zedekiah, after they've got Jeremiah up out of the pit, this justice of God, my God's justice, the king, sent and took Jeremiah, the one appointed by God, the prophet, unto him, to the third entry. And this third entry would be not the outer, not the first entry where everybody could get into, or the second where only the Levites were allowed, but the third entry now, they've come into the area 
where the Holy of Most Holies is, and this would be a place only allowed by the priests. That way no one could get to them. No one else would be allowed into that area. The three being complete. And the king's asking. He says, I'm going to ask you something. Don't hide anything from me. 15. Then Yeremiah said to Z unto Zedekiah, If I declare it unto you, will you not surely put me to death? And if I give you counsel, you will not hearken unto me. So, the one appointed by God said unto the, the judgment of God, the justice of God, If I declare it unto you, if I tell you these things, you'll surely put me to death. And, but if I tell you these things, you won't listen to me. 16. So Zedekiah the king swore secretly unto Yeremiah, saying, As the Lord lives, that made us this soul, I will not put you to death, neither will I give you into the hand of these men that seek your life. So Zedekiah, who was the king, told Yeremiah secretly, between Yeremiah and Zedekiah, saying, As the Lord lives, that made us this soul, that made our soul within, I will not put you to death. He's telling him, I'll not kill you. I'm not going to give you over to these men that dropped you down into the pit, that tried to take your life from you. 17. Then said Jeremiah unto Zedekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of hosts, the God of Israel, If you will go forth unto the king of Babylon's princes, then your soul shall live, and this city shall not be burned with fire, and you shall live, you and your house. So Yeremiah tells him, If you will go out now, go out to the king of Babylon, go out unto the king of Babylon, this God's servant who he was using at that time as a punishment, this king of confusion, if you will go out unto him, then your soul shall live, and this city shall not be burned with fire, and you shall live. God says you will live in this. I am going to give you life. 18, but if you will not go forth to the king of Babylon's princes, then this city shall be given into the hand of the Chaldeans, and they shall burn it with fire, and you shall not escape out of their hand. And this had really placed Zedekiah in quite the dilemma. He said, go out, and go out to the king of confusion, admit that you was wrong, admit your error, and I'll give you your life. See, because why? You would be listening to what God said. But if you will not go forth, the king of Babylon is going to come here and destroy this city with fire, and you will not escape. So it was a lose-lose situation as far as Zedekiah was concerned, because he would not hearken unto the word of the Lord. 19, and Zedekiah the king said unto Yeremiah, I am afraid of the Jews that are fallen away to the Chaldeans, that lest they deliver me into their hand. And they mocked me. So Zedekiah was afraid that the Jews, those from Judah, those from the Praesians, those ones who had fallen away to the Chaldeans already, those ones who had done been taken away by the clod breakers, by the ones who were supposedly the most wisest in the land. He was afraid. They would deliver him over and they would mock him or make fun of him because he tried to make a stand or tried to think he could conquer or go against the word of God. But Yeremiah said, They shall not deliver you. Hearken, I beg you to the voice of the Lord in that which I speak unto you. So it shall be well with you and your soul shall live. And Yeremiah is trying to let him know that God is punishing Go with the punishment of God. Take the punishment you got coming, and the Lord will give you your lives. But we're going to find out that Zedekiah was not going to listen. Zedekiah is not going to listen. 21. But if you refuse to go forth, this is the word that the Lord has shown me. But now, if you refuse, why? Because there's always a reward if you'll listen to God. 
See, I will give you your life for a prey. You will be able to save your own life, your own soul. But if you don't listen to me, then I will cause the king of Babylon to destroy this place. Punishment, see, punishment for not listening to me. 22. Behold, all the women that are left in the king of Judah's house shall be brought forth to the king of Babylon's princes. And those women shall say, Your familiar friends have set you on and have prevailed over you. Your feet are sunk in the mire, and they are turned away back. So we see now, while Jeremiah was in there, sunk in the mire himself, that the word of God had come to him. And Jeremiah had an understanding of what was going on. He said, look and see, behold, all the women that are left in the king of Judah's house shall be brought forth to the king of Babylon's princes. This is what's going to happen if you don't surrender and follow God. All the women, all these that are from men, are going to be given over to the, to the king of Babylon's princes. And these are the king of confusions, sons and his rulers, his mighty ones, and those women shall say, those, those women, these ones that have come from men, shall say, your familiar friends have set you on. Your good friends, those you have acquainted yourself with, those you've known all your life, have set you on. They've tricked you. They've deceived you. They've went along with you, but in the end, they're not going to stand behind you and have prevailed over you. They have made you overconfident. You have not listened to God, and you have, and your feet are sunk in the mire. Your ways, your feet, your paths are sunk in the mud that you cannot see them. And they are turned away back. In other words, your feet are turned away backwards. You're going the wrong way. And you can't see it because your friends have led you astray. 23. And they shall bring out all your wives and your children to the Chaldeans. And you shall not escape out of their hand. But you shall be taken by the hand of the king of Babylon. And you shall cause the city to be burned with fire. If you don't listen to God, they shall bring all your wives, all these wives, and all your children to the Chaldeans. To, out to these ones are supposed to be the wisest in the land. All your wives, you wasn't supposed to number unto you many wives in the first place. See, this was one of the commandments that was given to the king. You shall not number unto you many wives. Why? You're supposed to be set an example. These many wives represent these ones you go into to bring a forth a teaching into the earth. See, you'll bear sons and daughters. Sons and daughters. You shall not escape out of the hand of the king of Babylon, the king of confusion, and you will cause this city to be burned with fire, destroyed, parched. 24. Then Zedekiah, then said Zedekiah unto Yeremiah, Let no man know of these words. And you shall not die. So Zedekiah, the justice, my God's justice, tells the one whom God appointed. That don't let nobody know what you've said. 25. But if the prince is here that I have talked with you, and they come unto you, and say unto you, Declare unto us now what you have said unto the king. Hide it not from us, and we will not put you to death. Also, what the king said unto you. So Zedekiah is telling him now, if the princes, if my sons and these other rulers come up and they want to know what I said, what our conversation was, don't tell them anything. Even if they threaten your life, don't tell them what you said, don't tell them what I said. 26, then you shall say unto them, I presented my supplication before the king that he would not cause me to return to Jonathan's house to die there and Jeremiah didn't want to go back to Yonathan's house this is where they had him down into the 
dungeon, down into the pit, down into these cells even. He didn't want to go back into the pit of Malkia either. And he would tell them this. And he would tell them that he was asking a favor of the king, that he would not send him back to Yonathan's house, this one who God has gives to do his work, 27. Then came all the princes unto Yedermia and asked him, and he told them according to all these words that the king had commanded. So they left off speaking with him, for the matter was not reported. Nobody knew what was going on. Because all the princes did came, and they asked Jeremiah these exact what was going on, what did everybody say, and Jeremiah told them just what the king told him to say. Twenty-eight. So Yeremiah abode in the court of the guard until the day that Jerusalem was taken, and that's where he was, and this is how he stayed there. See, he wound up there by the hand of Zedekiah. Of course, Zedekiah got him out of the pit. And Jeremiah did have bread all the days that he was there in the, in the prison house. And it came to pass when Jerusalem was taken. And this, and this is where we're going to leave off we, because the next chapter is just going to pick up right here. See, we're going to find out just what was going on when, Jer when Jerusalem was taken and the king of Babylon finally comes in. Jeremiah's prophecies all coming true. They're being punished, for they did not listen to what God was trying to tell them. God's speaking as loudly as he can. God's making it loud and clear through the work that he's done in, in the earth, declaring himself that you might turn and return. All right, let's move on to chapter 39.